So why is it that there is no American electric unicycle company? A question that I hear frequently came after a long list of complaints about quality control. I don't get how this could have happened. And just straight up awareness of what it is that the customer, i.e. the EUC ridership, actually want. Lower top speed on 100 volt, that makes no Sense. It's true that the current crop of electric unicycle manufacturers are all China-based and to various extent share many of these problems and complaints. And strangely, the reason why it is nearly impossible for an American company to design and build an electric unicycle, I think goes a long way in speaking to why it has become increasingly difficult to innovate in the US. This week, the death of America innovation roll the intro as always if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes in case if you may not be aware, this is an electric unicycle. It is the latest iteration of self-balancing vehicle like a Segway, except it is quite a bit more capable. The Emotion V11, for instance, I have here, is considered to be a medium range model, yet it is capable of a top speed of 35 miles per hour with a range of about 50 miles. Yet it is able to fit all of those performance all inside of an enclosure that is no bigger than the typical carry-on rolling suitcase. The exceptional size to performance ratio coupled with a gyro-based hands-free control scheme make electric unicycle one of the most advanced piece of transportation device available on the market. If you're looking to purchase one of these bleeding edge pieces of transportation tech, which let me remind you are based mostly on technology that was invented and patented here in the US, you can only buy them from companies that are based out of China. So, why is that? To start, we have to first talk about the genesis of the electric unicycle, which can be traced back to the original self-balancing vehicle, the Segway Personal Transport, which unfortunately nowadays is mostly known for how much of a flop it turns out to be. Despite all the hype it had received when it was first announced, it is something that I had talked about previously in another video. And the short of it, I think, is is that it simply fell the faster and better test. As it turned out, nobody needed a $5,000 device that replaced walking. And as a result, the Segway never saw any sustained interest despite multiple iterations and ownership of the company itself and eventually saw its end under the ownership of the Chinese scooter company Naibot. But this wasn't actually why Naibot bought Segway in the first place. Naibot bought Segway because of electric unicycle. But before getting into an explanation on why that is, let's first address the elephant in the room, which is that of course there is in fact already an American electric unicycle company and it is called Solo Wheel. Started by Shen Chen, it was in fact the very first company that actually produced an electric unicycle commercially for sale. If you like, you can still go to solowheel.com and purchase an electric unicycle. That is if you don't mind actually buying a wheel with really outdated specification. And I get the feeling that Solo Wheel don't really expect you to either. Since if you actually go to their website and click on the purchase button, you'll get a dead link. I know it's strange that a company can both tout that their own product as the next transportation revolution, but yet show so little inclination in actually selling it. And I suspect the reason why that is, is that strangely it now has become more profitable for Solo Wheel to essentially kill their own product. And that reason lies at the core of the US innovation dilemma. 
but there is one last crucial actor to this crazy play that I must introduce and that is China whom by the beginning of 2010s had already come to dominate the manufacturing of just about every single consumer household product and has begun to set their eyes on the higher dollar value technology and electronic sector next the Chinese government signal their ambition via the five-fold increase in the size of the Shenzhen Special Economic Zones in the July of 2010, which led to a whole new crop of Chinese companies hungry to find the next big tech-oriented product to produce. But the event that brought all these different actors into active conflict and eventually will lead to the end of all US-based electric unicycle development, strange Eventually started with a successful Kickstarter launched by Shen in 2013 for the Hover Tracks, which is also the device that would eventually become known as the hoverboard. The traditional trajectory of a successful Kickstarter campaign should have been further product development followed by a search for production partners, possibly in China, but the glut of Chinese companies coupled with the internet short-circuited all of that. They took one look at Shen's launch video and said, oh, we can so backward engineer that thing. And they did. By the fall of 2014, independent of Shen and his newly granted patent, the hoverboard became the sensation in the Canton Fair, the largest trade fair in China. And shortly after that, it somehow made its way into the hands of celebrity like Justin Bieber and Soldier Boy. And all of a sudden, the device that seemed to go by a different name depending on who you ask, became the phenomenon that Shen and his original $85,000 Kickstarter would likely never had ever imagined. The result go rush and surge of interest in self-balancing vehicle likely solicited additional interest in some of the other devices that Shen had in his portfolio. Finally brought us to electric unicycles. The solo wheel actually predates the hover track by a good two years, but because of the steeper learning curve, never saw the widespread popularities during its early years, but there were sufficient interest in it wherein some Chinese companies took up producing similar devices, and one of them was Ninebot. The company that has now become synonymous with electric scooter started its life as producer of southbound balancing vehicle, more specifically the Ninebot One. A now legendary electric unicycle that many early adopters still remember fondly. To Shen, it was a blatant ripoff of his solo wheel patent. However, unlike the many other Chinese companies whom he went after, unsuccessfully if I may, the typical strategy that many of these companies employ is simply to try to make as much money as they can off of the knockoff and then close up shop and run with the profit, Ninebot decided to dig in and fight back. With an investment from the phone company Xiaomi, Ninebot was able to purchase Segway and all of its self-balancing patent and counter Su Shen, the details of which are all hidden in sealed court documents, but as the court battles stretched out, it became increasingly pointless for Ninebot to continue the case, since with the explosion of popularity of its other product, the electric scooter, it began to transition fully into an electric scooter company and abandon the smaller and much less lucrative self-balancing market, which left Shen as the last man standing in their battle. That is, if you don't count the many other Chinese companies that continues to make copies or knock off of his other products. Copies of which now far surpass the performance and capability of his original design. So why is it that Shen stopped the development of his own product? Well, remember the hoverboard? See, the one thing that Chinese companies are really good at doing is producing ever larger quantity of cheaper copies. And as they continue to produce cheaper copies of the copies, the price continues to drop and so do reliability, safety, and quality control all go right out of the window and the cheap and poorly made hoverboards begin to burn. 
There were a reported 60 fires in 2015 and the Consumer Safety Commission launched an investigation and ordered a massive recall in 2016 and by the end of the year it was game over for hoverboard for Shen all of a sudden his invention became a liability the same liability issue continued to plague many of the other similar products in the self-balancing segment for instance there are multiple ongoing lawsuits against future motion the maker of the popular one wheel with little to no government safety regulation around these devices there are also little to no ways for companies to shield themselves from liability which is also why that despite the many complaints from the one wheel ridership future motion ain't never ever going to make a more powerful or faster version of the one wheel and that is the root of the innovation dilemma at least for the electric unicycle if you somehow manage to design and engineer a better and more capable device for you to keep the price low you more than likely have to turn to China but at the same time the companies and factories that would help you with the production will also be fully capable of producing cheaper knockoff not to mention that with the increasing sophistication of the companies in Shenzhen it is very possible that they would actually be able to engineer an even better wheel than your original you will also have to artificially limit the performance of your own devices to help manage your liabilities while your Chinese competitor have a lot less to worry about when it comes to the same subject since it is likely extremely difficult for an individual here in the US to attempt suing a Chinese company for injury or damages finally there is also Shen the holder of the original electric unicycle patent who as far as I can tell had completely given up on developing his own product any further however if you somehow manage to come up with a better device and have it become wildly successful I have little doubt that he will want a piece of the action not terribly unexpected given the rocky history Shen had at collecting on what he believed to be his own work and all of these factors combined create a nearly impossible environment for anyone who wished to innovate at least in the self-balancing rideable space here in the US but I suspect that similar stories exist in many other other sectors as well since electric unicycle aren't the only market where Chinese company seems to be dominating but it isn't all roses and cupcakes for the Chinese either and honestly I'm just as skeptical towards claims that the Chinese will go on challenge for the rest of the century and in future episodes I'll talk about why I think that dedicate this record to carnival to all you brothers take a long trip down south Virginia Baltimore all around the world and your girl gets this message you ain't coming back she's sitting back in the room the lights are off she's crying and my voice comes in Tangent for a scooter review channel, but I hope you're just as fascinated by the stories behind these wheels as I am. You know what? Aha! I saw how mad it should trick you into wasting another 15 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friend and teach him how to ride and get them hooked. Until the next episode, thank you. Uh.